Oh god. That always happens when I use the lamp. It, it just makes me look so fuzzy and vintage. Hello. Hello, guys. Hello, hello. Ah! Sorry, I'm stretching. Oh, it's been a long day. It's It's been a day. Oh, man. Good afternoon. <laughs> oh, I'm just, I'm like, this sounds really pathetic, but you know when you get into a heated argument with someone on the internet and then you just get like a huge headache because you're really trying to choose your words carefully and so like, but at the same time, it's really hard to have a nuanced conversation on the internet because of like, tones and all that kind of things you usually get like person to person so like whenever I like I remember when I was a teenager and I would you know say things on tumblr and then back up the things that I said I would get headaches all the time because I was not only focused on making a point and making that point thoroughly but also like that back of the head anxiety of God, I hope this doesn't upset anyone. Like, the last thing I want, like, I want for people to believe where I'm coming from, but also, I don't want to make anyone upset because of that. So, like, those are, like, the two main stressors that cause my brain to, uh, put on red lights whenever I have- I get deep into internet discourse. Uh, that's you in the IRL discussions? It's- I mean, IRL discussions, at the very least, there's a point where, you know, if you're like physically exhausted, you can walk away. But I feel like on the internet, there's more of a, you know, it can kind of go on forever if you want. Like unless people start blocking, but yeah. Uh, yeah, bestie, Atlas. I, it's not like I got into discourse. It's more like, um, so Safi and Atlas, you guys know what's been going on in the OTD circles. I'll keep it vague because I don't, I, I don't want to like use Twitch to be like, so this person was mean to me and because I have a platform by myself where I can talk without anyone criticizing me, this is the perfect opportunity to make me like a victim. And, like that, that's not what these streams are for, but. IRL discussions are like quick time events. Yeah, if you're thinking on the fly, I get headaches because I have so much time and I want to respond as quickly as possible while making sure my words are like precisely worded. You know? Like, I need to bake a fine cake. <laughs> Things like that. Anyway, it does have to do with the OTD community. Basically, long story short, there's an account that focuses on queer baiting, which personally, is it like a serious topic? At the very least, I view it. OTD accounts are fighting. Yeah, I know. I mean, like, like, like that would ever happen in an internet community. But basically, I take um, queer bait very seriously because if you're calling a media queer bait, you're basically like critiquing the, you know, their views and just in general, it's like it's basically like a a really like. Um, charged critique that's what i think calling something queer bait is and so um one of the accounts i was like kind of tangentially related to basically used the whole queer bait thing to just uh post some things that were more vaguely queer bait and might not have been true and then like but long story short i like a lot of um, people went after this OTD account because they said some people's favorite ships are queer bait, and obviously this is an excuse to go after accounts that disagree with you. I think like no matter what, even if I disagree with you, there's usually no reason to send death threats on the internet. Like, like even if even if someone literally told me to to kill myself, I wouldn't tell them in turn because that's how like serious I try to approach the way I talk to people. But basically, um, the more I learned about the topic, the more I was like, oh, this account is like, this isn't account, this account isn't like getting hate out of nowhere. They're like intentionally posting really vague opinions. 
and refusing to listen to other people who have information on the series that they might not know. Because, like, they even admit that they don't know a lot about this particular series, but they were calling it Query Bay anyway. So, like, even when people were trying to, like, talk to them respectfully, they were very much, like, it's just my opinion, like, being kind of immature about it. So, um, long story short, I decided to not be a coward and actually approach them directly and be like, Hey, um, I agree with you on some of your uh, queer bait ideas. I think that, you know, the overreactions, you don't deserve them. Obviously, bullying and... If you have, if you're disagreeing with someone, like, settle it there. Don't, like, private a quote retweet and be like, Oh my god, this person is so... I, I hate that. That's something I hate about all social media, is that for some reason, whenever someone says something that could be misinterpreted as malicious, people just love to just paint a target on them, basically. And I'm like, why would you do that when you could just tell them straight up and, you know, try to have a discussion about it, rather than making this like a petty back and forth? So I acknowledge that, yeah, obviously, Whatever you would do, nothing deserves, like, harassment. But I said that, listen, you know, OTD accounts are, you know, they're very community-based, and queerbaiting is a very serious, you know, like, issue. Like, like the, the admins who run that account are, uh, the qu private quote routine function. Yeah, especially since, um, something I've noticed on a lot of OTD accounts is that a lot of them have, like, anxiety and paranoia. So even though, like, obviously, they have enough confidence to run, like, a side account, a lot of people can't handle it when people private quote retweet them because of the anxiety that, oh, what if they're saying something bad and I can't see it? Which, like, yeah, but I don't know. Like, some people are sensitive to it, some people aren't, and I just feel like... The best thing you can do is just be respectful and just talk outright, I think. Anyway, I would try to... Basically, um, they kept saying... I don't... Like, I kept en encouraging them to, Hey, queer baiting is serious. You're... Like, the admins running things are also gay. So, like, I know you're not coming from a harmful place. But at the very least, um, you know, understand that there could be room for discussion on this issue. And, like, be open to, like, you know different opinions and instead of saying like this is my opinion i won't hear any other opinions just like say like you know at least respect the discussion especially since queer baiting is like it's so like complex and vague that it's not like a black and white issue like i could talk about like the the nuances of good and bad gay representation especially in japanese media like all day but Basically, I was trying to tell them that, and they kept coming back at me with, I don't- I, I can't emphasize how much I don't care, this is my account, I don't care. And I didn't really have a response to that, because fundamentally, what I was trying to, um, what I was trying to tell them is to have more respect for other people's opinions, but if their response is, I don't have to, this is my account, I'm like, yeah, there's- there's really no getting through to someone like that, isn't it? Like, if someone just flat out admits, you know, like, uh... Like, you know, like, when you're, like, uh, talking with someone on the internet, and they, like, say something weird, and you're like, Hey, like, maybe you shouldn't say that, and they're like, it's my account, and, like, you, you're not- you're not the boss of me. It's like, they're kind of right. But also, like, there's kind of an assumption of... Like, once you gain a decent social following, like, shouldn't you have some kind of responsibility? Like, I don't know, like, like... It's like, if you if you have an account, or like, if you have- if you're on social media at all, it's not your responsibility to be nice to everyone. I understand that. Like, if- you can say fuck you to everyone you want, be because, like, that's in your power. But, like, I think just outright you know, refusing to understand others, that's definitely something that it felt, it felt like, like, I can't, I can't enforce that upon you, obviously, but it just felt like, huh, there's just no, like, I, I was trying to have the discussion to try to come to, like, an understanding, but, like, if we're here, I'm like, 
Oh, okay. Like, th this, this is someone who's just, like, absolutely refused to change, and I'm like, oh well. And, um, I tried the... Uh, I did consider blocking them, but I, I was like, this, that's so petty to just block Eleanor. So I was like, fine. Let, let me just try one more time to try to... Yeah. The the tomboy now. I'll talk about the whole trans Naoto thing later. But basically, um, the last thing I wanted to say to the, the queer bait account was basically, hey, I like I'm not telling I'm not saying you have to agree with anyone. I'm just saying that if you have an account that is dedicated to your opinions, where you are fully welcoming people who disagree with you to give you attention and you agree that queer baiting is an issue that should be addressed, at the very least, explain why you believe that way. Like, elaborate. Don't just say this is queer bait because it's my opinion. Just like, at the very least, like, give an explanation. Because it's your opinion and like, fine, you don't have to listen to other people. But at the very least, just make some points. Like, I don't know. It just... It just felt like, um, intentionally making a, like, a really big accusation and then a vague elaboration on it. I felt like, like, this just doesn't feel like a good approach to this. And, um, then I said, it's similar to calling a ship abusive and then being vague about it because I take queer- I can take the accusation of queerbaiting pretty seriously. And, like, the abuse thing is, like, sort of similar. And that, you know, you're saying that this piece of media has this really bad thing in it. So if you want to, like, call out this media for having this bad thing, then you should elaborate on it. Like, if you genuinely want to be an account where you want to, like, you know, tell people your opinion, then at the very least elaborate on it. And then they said I was... And then they got upset that I was accusing them of making light of abuse for making that comparison, and they blocked me! And that's how the discussion ended, folks. And, yep. That's... that's the drama. Doesn't it sound riveting, guys? Oh, man. Oh yeah, uh, so if you see, if you, by the way, if you, I, I know some of you are OTD accounts, if you see Queerbait of the Day, like, vaguely posting someone, it might be me, like, I know they, like, I don't, I don't know, I'm not gonna touch their account, I'm not the kind of person to be like, who, I'm not the kind of person who, like, leaks DMs and be like, look at this stupid person, but, yeah, but... <laughs> Um, I, I assume a block means I'll leave you alone, but to some people it just means look at this stupid thing someone told me, so like whatever. OTD accounts are usually run by people not open to nuance. Yeah, I mean also they're just a, they're just run by people who are just really, are like teenagers. It's kind of the reason why um, when I started my OTD account, uh, by the way if you're new, OTD means of the day. They're like gimmick accounts where it's like they post a theme like once a day. Uh, like a pairing or a character and i remember there was a there were people saying oh like you know if you have an otd account join the discord and i, I was like it I, like i i support this and i support like the building of a community but so many people in this community are like 14 or 16 i'd be like i i don't feel like as much as i like enjoy being around you guys and i support you guys i would feel a little weird about being in that like close proximity so i'm gonna keep my distance so yeah, that is that is something I've noticed. Also, a lot of people who start OTD accounts tend to like not realize yeah, if you're posting if you're having gimmick accounts, you're going to generally like you you kind of learn you have to deal with the stress that comes with it. You're trying to distance yourself from the stuff aside from daily posting. Pretty sure queer bait of the day oh, screen, post a screenshot. Yeah. It's because um it's, it's the abusive one, right? I said the um, vague posting that something is queerbait is like vague posting that something is abusive because you're using a genuinely harmful like 
issue and just not elaborating on it and then being flabbergasted that people are gonna take it the wrong way and I was like okay at, at least they didn't post my username or anything I don't know anyway that's that that's what's going on and as for the as for the Naoto thing okay so that this is like this is a huge hot button issue specifically focusing on Spike Chunsoft's approach to gender fucky characters let's call them gender fucky characters sucks that you have to deal with that yeah i mean again that's the source of my headache earlier is that I, on one hand i was kind of glad to be blocked because i feel like both of us were kind of looking to end the discussion because neither of us were having a good time but at the same time like the insinuation that i genuinely upset them because they thought i was comparing them to making light of abuse like i I don't like it when people get upset because of me. Like it's just, it's just very, it's a very like basic feeling. Like even if they're misinterpreting what I'm saying, the fact that they're like in a worse mood or they're offended because of it, like that personally, like like I just don't like it. <laughs> I don't like the feeling. So that kind of tr contributed to the headache. But anyway, with the Naoto thing, I haven't played Persona Three, but. The gist of Naoto's character is that um, they're a very specific trope of character in which society places a lot of strict gendered ex- Oh, persona. That's, that's a coincidence. Uh, society places very strict, rigid boxes for genders. This is the, the man gender. This is the wom gender. And so for certain characters, they're like, I feel so restricted by this box. I want to go into this other box because to escape the Persona 4, yeah, you're right. To, I want to go and um, make people think I'm in the other box so I can escape the responsibilities of this box. And um, what the trope is usually trying to deconstruct is the idea that these boxes are so rigid, not the idea of like transitioning as a whole. That's why when it comes to Naoto, like the whole point of her arc Kind of like in a Mulan kind of way. It's like, I feel like women can't do enough. I'm in my gender box and women can't do enough. So I'm going to disguise myself as a boy so I can do more than I can do as a woman. And in, like, this isn't, I'm saying like this is what is, this is the intention of the material. They want Naoto to be an exploration of like, like, I wanted to disguise myself as a man, but I need to accept that women can be anyone, and women can be strong, and I need to accept my femininity. Like, like that's all, that's the point of the trope. The trope is that, like, it's that these boxes exist, and the solution to this trope isn't going into a different place, it's more so opening the boxes a little bit to account for variation within the box. It's also like obviously it's not it's not a very great trope because most of the time it just reinforces harmful stereotypes like the tomboy woman becomes a girly woman by accepting her femininity at the end. like that kind of that trope fucking sucks and you can see that in American media more uh, usually it's not like women disguising themselves it's just women uh, like dressing more masculinely but in Japanese media because of the the art style usually. Um, you can have it's it's a I guess it's more believable when someone cross dresses. It's the same thing with Chihiro, yes, because Chihiro's whole arc is supposed to be an insecure, like scrawny guy being like the, the being burdened by the expectations of masculinity and pretending to be feminine, and then like the the true arc of the story is that like. You're using your femininity to hide from your insecurities as a man, and you have to, you know, be strong as a man. Like, you don't have to. A lot of these stories, those like happy endings, are you don't have to change who you are, which, like, obviously in a trans context isn't great, but in like a gender non conforming cis way, that's what it's supposed to be. But here's the thing. It's because of this like weird complex relationship with gender and gender roles that 
obviously, people are going to see Chihiro as a trans girl because the whole disguising yourself as another gender and then like expressing discontent with you know your given gender and essentially hiding yourself in this other gender, people are obviously gonna like, gonna read it as a trans metaphor. Like that's that's just inevitable. Like no matter what the intention is. But I think that personally, I know that in canon, Naoto is a hundred percent meant to be a cis girl with femininity issues, and Chihiro is meant to be a cis boy with masculinity issues. That's what they are, in text, meant to be. Just saying that outright, even though, like, the tropes, like, play into, like, trans-phobic things, that is what they're meant to do. It's like, it's supposed to be, like, empowering in some weird way, but, hi, Lavender Emily. <laughs> We're talking about gender discourse, as usual, but, See the, see, the problem is, both examples are, like, so, like, not only do they, are they, like, usually transphobic, they also usually don't do the cross-dressing story right. Like, it's a trope that you can get right. Like, uh, Haruhi from Oron is a good example, in which she, like, disguises herself as a guy, but she's also, like, very nonchalant about it. She's, like, she's not insecure about her femininity, she does feel like society puts people in boxes, but her but her solution to overcoming them is to just disregard the boxes entirely. It's like it's almost a more revolutionary concept than like returning to her box, you know? So like when people say Haruhi is non-binary or like canon non-binary, like I get that. There's a lot of evidence in canon that shows that like she's she's more fluid and like stuff. But when people say that like Naoto is a canon trans guy or that Chihiro is a canon trans girl, like I feel like it's such a complex issue that calling them definitively one thing or the other is just there's there's no definite answer like obviously um for these kind of stories the the solution like the more well-written solution is for them to be trans but i feel like whenever it comes to you know saying something is canon or not you have to address whether the in-text genuinely wants to support it or is against it because i think that because chihiro's story and naoto's story is transphobic saying that they're canon trans isn't doing them the justice you desire like ultimately my take on the discussion is that like some people will see naoto as a cis girl because that's how she's written in text some people will see naoto as a trans boy because you know even though it wasn't the intention she could like, he could be read that way and you know in a rec in a reclamation kind of way you can try to make something like, good out of this but the fundamental like reality is that no matter like which side you're on it's just not well written like can we just all agree that like can we just like if you want a trans character really badly don't reclaim the ones that have transphobic stories like i'm, I'm not like a I'm not a super trans person, so I can't speak for everyone. But I feel like <sighs> there's so much debate over Naoto's gender and Chihiro's gender when it's just so like, can we just all agree that, you know, Atlas and Spike Chunsoft just can't write gender people well and just let people do whatever they want with them? Like they should be like open domain or some shit. I don't know. People aren't wrong for thinking Naoto is like a girl and people aren't wrong for thinking Naoto is a guy. It's like, I feel like that's the situation where either interpretation has basis and has, you know, has like, you know, a, like I can understand you finding comfort in either of them. Like personally, um, as someone who likes androgynous female characters, seeing Naoto as a tomboy, like potentially, I was like, huh. Like, I could, I could get on board with that, but, like, I, I just, either side of the discussion, I just feel like there's no acknowledgement of, like, how 
how touchy of a subject this is. Because, yeah. She's a non binary femme. Yeah, honestly, a lot of these headcanons can, like, a lot of these arguments can be alle alleviated by this person ascends all gender, so the argument isn't necessary. But I just, like, people who think that uh, Naoto's a trans guy, saying that if you think Naoto's a cis girl, like, you're wrong, like, I feel like that's just a little too far. Because, like, that's what, like, subtext or not that's what they are meant to be in canon like <laughs> you know like it, it's such a it's just a weird discussion where if you're too aggressive on either side it just it just sucks it fucking sucks you should do the same thing with naoto yeah honestly whenever you have a story where like a character is like I want to experiment being the other gender, or I'm just doing this gender temporary. Just be like, yeah, they could be either gender, fuck it. Why do we have to put this character into boxes? Like, the whole point of the cross-dressing gender whatever stories is that the boxes are shit. Gender boxes are shit. Destroy all boxes. That, I mean, I'm also non-binary, so like, propaganda, but... <laughs> yeah, gender is not real. Gender was made up so the bathroom institution could sell more bathrooms. Anyway. <sighs> oh boy, I need to... Catch my breath for a moment. That was a very impassioned discussion. And do you see why I can only talk about this stuff when I'm on video and not like have have it be in like a Twitter or Tumblr post where I have like a limited amount of text I can put in and like a lack of tonal and real live like changes I can make? Do you understand why I can say this stuff live and it's much easier for me for a nuanced discussion like this rather than saying it on the internet? That's just... Yeah, I'm exhausted. But since you guys have been sitting through all this, here, have some stars. In his Danganronpa Let's Play, ProZD handled the Chihiro discussion very well. So if you're gonna make an OTD post on such a controversial character and not elaborate on the nuances, yeah! If you're gonna make an OTD post and not like address the potential nuances, you can't just act like a victim if people who disagree with you are going to like call you out. That's what sucks about the internet. Like I said earlier that, you know, people like to overreact when it comes to intention versus execution, but there's also people who just don't want to elaborate if they don't want to. That's that's what sucks. You know? I remember like this was this was a long time ago. This was in the, the game Grumps was playing uh, Danganronpa, and I think once the Chihiro thing was revealed, Eren had assumed that, like, inherently, that this was just a trans metaphor, like, in the story. And so he was, like, really being kind of, like, blunt and being like, oh, hey, don't call Chihiro, like, a he. Chihiro is supposed to be, like, a trans girl. And I'm like, like, yeah, that's, that's, that's a natural assumption someone can have from the text. But, like, explicitly saying one or the other is wrong is just like, fuck. Who cares? It's like, if we're, if we're gonna have a debate on something controversial, can it at least be about a well written character? Like, if a character's writing is so bad that people are arguing, everyone arguing is wrong, can we just, like, move on to another discussion? <laughs> That's why I'm kind of exhausted by the Naoto discourse. Because people who are really adamant on either side, like, keep kind of setting themselves up for failure. Like, unless they explicitly say, oh, Naoto is, you know, trans, headcanon or whatever. But, you know, that that's, at, at, the, at the very least, that puts forward the implication of opinion. But... <sighs> There's a lot of OTD accounts I follow that post characters, not pairings, like me. And Naoto generally comes up now and then. And every time people are like, 
careful, OP. You're walking a minefield. I'll, I'll get behind me, OP. And I'm like, can we... Like, oh, I just I just wish people would actually be willing to talk about complex stuff rather than like throwing an opinion like a grenade and just hiding behind the explosion that comes afterwards. Like, like why do we have to hide from discussions? Why, why can't we just? Oh man. I mean, to be fair, um, I tried to have a discussion and I was blocked, and uh, you know, vagued on someone's account, so uh, that could show that sometimes discussion doesn't mean shit if the other person just refuses to listen. So, like, that's- that was on me. Um, but yeah. <laughs> ah, jeez. Anyway, we will be working on- oh, speaking of Naoto, I was actually thinking we were working on uh, Bree a little bit today. So let me open Psy for a second. I will hydrate. Thank you. Damn it. I want to make this big without making it full size. Stop. Let me live. Wait, I recognize this one. This is the remix where they say, rest in peace, Satoru Iwata, and I get sad every time. So I have to take it out of my playlist, so I just don't have that emotional... <laughs> that emotional dissonance in the middle of my stream. Anyway, um, the way I'm doing Brie is basically the Haruhi way, in which she just kind of presents more masculinely, and like literally gender doesn't matter to her. And I see her as more of a, like a, like a tomboyish girl but honestly like with a lot of my characters like any characters i thought brie was inspired by naoto actually she was more so inspired by shuichi from dengarompa more than naoto but her most recent designs are definitely taking inspiration from naoto uh yeah honestly when it comes to gender i know i say oh like yuna is a girl and adam's a boy like once I came out as non-binary with every pronoun, it kind of feels like I could I could slap a uh, they to the end of anyone's pronouns and be like, they're all non-binary now. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, I man, I wish I would I could pull a Steven Universe and just make everyone like they're a gender, but they're also kind of not a gender. I wish I could do that. I might just I might just do that. As much as I criticize Steven Universe. Rebecca Schurg was kind of big-brained with the whole non-binary alien girls shtick. She was kind of onto something there. Hold on, I'm just getting some inspiration from the Bree's gender is fish. It's fish. Bree's gender is those uh, those fishing caps you see that says "woman want me, fish fear me." That that's her gender. The lines are a little too thick here. I think we can thin them up. I might just. Like I'm I'm honestly this close to making everyone in my cast just like non-binary for the fuck of it. And be like, what the hell, why not? Everyone's human, there's no aliens. This is just an alternate universe where everyone is just like fuck gender. <laughs> oh how how I wish I could incorporate that, but because um, you know, there's a lot of real world issues and parallels being tackled in my story. I can't just put that in willy nilly like wish fulfillment. I actually have to treat it with a little bit of like nuance and like a it's a writing thing. My line arts are crisp, aww. But if you make everyone non 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 B non B, how will it be brought up in the game? Uh simple. Whenever everyone's bio will have the pronouns on it. And every one of them will have like at least they like you know how Bree's like she her? like slap a they them on the end there you go 
And, like, yeah, that, that's the solution. But the thing is, um, I feel like when you're non-binary, uh, a lot of people who are non-binary don't like gender terms. I use gender terms a lot. I feel like that'd be an issue. Like, I can't, I can't call Mara a hot girl if she is also non-binary. Like, that feels weird. Like, see, that's the weird thing, is that a lot of my writing, um, sort of lore via pronouns and bio. Exactly. So it's not like, uh, it's not like weirdly alien where it's like, Hello, my name is blank. My gender is blank. Please, compartmentalize me as you will. Uh, it's, it's a little more like, oh, this is like a, like a quick bio. If Dangaroko can put people's fucking blood type, chest sizes, feet type in their bio, I'm pretty sure I can put pronouns in mine. I think that's okay. You love gender terms? <sighs> I'm non-binary, yes, I'm a girl boss. See, that's the thing, but those are like... I feel like those are very specific like character archetypes like uh like himbo and bimbo you can be non-binary and be a himbo i'm saying things like uh literally just saying like hey dude or hey um you know that like the girls were here and the boys are here like you know like that kind of stuff like if i make everyone on like i don't know Yeah, well, people will assume certain characters like Yuna will be cis woman if you mainly use she, her, especially since pronouns can be used in look. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's like a weird, it's a weird issue. But that's kind of what happened with Steven Universe also. Like the whole point of the gems being non-binary was like, you know, that was kind of a thing, but it was never actually stated in show that Steven's moms had no gender, technically. So you could give the excuse that these are three women he's living with. I am a girl boss, I am a himbo, I am the next Virgin Mary, I will never die. Goodness gen- goodness gracious. I almost said goodness gender. That's a different thing. Two banana curls, that's a really cute username. Very- it's very evocative. Thank you for following. I don't know what a banana curl is, but I'm glad you have two of them, so they can be together. Oh! Oh, I'm still on uh, Just Chatting, I just realized. Hold on. I have to change the category. I'm a dum-dum. I'm a silly. I'm not just chatting, I'm also drawing. That would be very misleading. I decided to make Bree's hair a little more like... Uh, there's something about her cap that strikes me as like a little bit off. I think it's because it's tilted forward a little too much. How much gender will we fit in the color-coded case today? Also, the whole the whole non-binary thing will, might be like a little confusing because like I don't know, like like for example, you know, Yuna is a lesbian. That's gonna be like something that's like universal, no matter what gender she ends up being. Is Yuna is a lesbian? So if if Clover's non-binary is does that count? If Clover is a gay non-binary and Yuna's a female non- like a, a lesbian non-binary, like how does- how does sexuality work out there? Like- like that's also just a weird- a weird thing I'll have to address at some point. You know? It's like this is why just making everyone non-binary isn't as easy as it might seem. Take a shot every time we trans- we discuss gender. <laughs> Listen. I hate to remind people of the concept of gender, but it's still very much something that I think about. You know. Gender is just there. Gendering.
Oh yeah, this fucks. You know, being a lesbian transcends all alternate timelines. Yeah, I can't see you know with a guy. It's like it's like she's just one of those character types where I'm like, no, no. Like you know how like Megara and Hercules. Like I'm like, you know, very much a Megara type, but Hercules would have to be a woman for that to work out. And that's saying something. As someone who's very bisexual. Having a character I can only see as lesbian is 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 as a fucking thing. I feel like Clover could go either way because he was bi originally, but I feel like I, I mainly made him gay because uh, one of his significant relationships is with Rowan, and like I couldn't think of any other character whose main significant relationship was with a guy, any other male character anyway. Non-binary can be the norm, you have token cis characters. Listen, I already have token white characters. That is not far out of the realm of possibility. Like, you jest, but, you know. You know. I have approximately one white blonde male character. And the, the monkey's paw of having just one is that I know the, fa the phantom... I hate talking about fandom, like, it, it just makes me sound conceited, like, counting my eggs before they hatch. But I know that there are gonna be some people who are like, Oh my god, Calvin is my life. And I'm like, bitch, you, I know why you like him. I know why you simp for him. I know. But anyway. <laughs> I shouldn't be so mean. Thank you for the token white people, yeah. Listen, I have white friends. Uh, you know. I go to church. We learn to respect all people. Oh, Emil! Fuck me, ugh. Sorry. I I've known him as Calvin for so long. But yes, his name is Emil. Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, I love white people. Uh, if I could have voted, you know, I would have voted for... You know, I voted for Joe Biden, okay? I love white people. I support them. I support their rights. I support equality for everyone. No matter the skin color. You could be white, pink, pale, purple. Like, I don't care what skin color you are. God, it, 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 it like boils my blood so much when people like say that all the time. They're like, I don't care if you're black, white, Yellow, green, or purple. And I'm like, first of all, you including yellow in there, already on thin fucking ice. Second of all, like, ugh. Like, I feel like everyone who says that, like, means well, but they're, they're it's so performative. It's just, I, I just really don't like it. Emil looks like he can flippy. Ugh, arts. You will be not surprised when you realize what he is inspired by a little bit. You will be not surprised. Well, to be fair, um, he, I had to have at least one military-esque character, considering that all of them were wearing military-esque uniforms. But yeah, the if you see a resemblance between a character and something, you will find that a lot of the time, the resemblance... Mm, May have been intentional. Wig? <laughs> Is he inspired by Flippy? <sighs> I... <laughs> I do not have the power to confirm nor deny. But if you guys were here yesterday, you know I put Flippy embarrassingly high on my sexy man tier list. You know. If you were here, you know. You know, uh, 2011 was a really difficult time for a lot of people. Uh, Obama's presidency, we were going through an economic depression. Um, LMFAO came out with their shitty, shitty album. A lot of things were happening in 2010. 
And maybe one of them was me in my happy tree friends phase. Perhaps. Imagine the Chromosynth characters kin the characters they're inspired by. Whenever I see those like characters that, you know, those threads on Twitter where it's like, this character kins these characters, and it's like, yeah, it feels like a lot of those are like jokes, but also like they're they're obviously also clear inspirations for these characters. Like I feel like, yeah. I guess that's part of the joke too. Also, there's a... This isn't related to anything. <laughs> this isn't related to anything, but... Um, I've been using the word drama in discourse less ever since, like, 2018. Because the internet has bastardized it to the point where it can mean anything. And it usually means, like, petty internet squabble. When most of the time, when I'm talking about, like, internet things, it's like an actual important discussion has to be had rather than these people are like, I don't know. That's why whenever I say like, hey, like, yeah, something's happened on the internet that I want to talk about. I don't like calling it discourse or like drama. A lot of people like calling it that because it's like, it's a really easy way to like underplay, you know, anything that it's involved in. But when people are like, oh man, the Chris Chan drama. I'm like, drama could mean he said a bad word or he did the bad thing. And unfortunately it was the latter. And I'm, I regret looking it up. Don't look it up. Uh, yeah, that was, that was also like a huge internet thing that was happening, uh, recently. Drama being used to describe everything, like, it, it like trivializes everything, yeah. Like, even if what you're saying is leg legitimately drama, like, it's, uh, I don't know. That's why, sorry to talk about the OTD accounts again. When people started posting, like, saying, my account has no room for drama. Like, you know, I stay out of discourse. I just post my characters. Like, and I'm like, like, I understand where you're coming from. But also, like, when you're talking about discourse, are you talking about, like, homophobia or something? Because, like, I don't know. Like, the, the vague way they put it, it's like, it's very holier than thou to imply that like you're you're above petty squabbles but just saying that it's drama or discourse is just you know it's it's just i don't know the word means nothing now yeah i i especially hit the word because any like actual issue that's that has attention on twitter which is like hey this artist uh took my art and made all the characters white and called me a slur and I got angry and then someone on YouTube will post a video that's like drama over simple art edit tumblr sjw's overreact again and I'm like the word drama means nothing to me anymore like either say what it is or just like don't say anything Clarity is like number one on the internet internet be thorough or I'm just gonna assume you're hiding something Jesus Christ I have no patience for internet like the lack of internet nuance anymore You hate those titles so much. Yeah, oh my god. There's also something about uh, commentary channels on YouTube, which, by the way, I'm sure they're useful in their own way. Like, a lot of the times I learn about issues and stuff through people on YouTube talking about it. But channels that dedicate themselves to something negative, which is basically, like, you know those channels where it's like, I'm gonna talk about, like, you know, a shitty thing that happened in the art community. It's like, this is important, but if you're basically building your channel off of that, Aren't you kind of like in a way profiting off of bad news? Like you're basically building a brand 
and it's gonna reach a point where someone doing something bad triggers a light bulb of I want to capitalize on this in your mind. And once it reaches that point, I feel like you have to take a step back and be like, is this content actually like healthy for me? You know? Cause, Cause you know, focusing on like harmful and critiquable things is very important, obviously. I'm, I'm a big proponent of media criticism, but when it comes to a point where you see something that's genuinely harmful and something in your head mis like, and you just like say, at least I can make attention and profit off of this. It feels like, uh, mm, I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that. It's, it's kind of been a thing for a lot of internet subcultures. Commentary co content is inevitably to, no, I wouldn't say commentary like specifically is toxic. I think if you're basically building an account based off of, hey, watch out for this person, they're a pedophile. Hey, watch out for this person, they're an abuser. It's like, it's good that you're spreading information, but also at some point you have to realize that you're building a platform off of, like it's almost like positive reinforcements for bad things. And I'm like, Ugh, there's a certain point where you, you gotta, you gotta like step back and realize what you're doing. It's also the reason why um, back in the Steven Universe days, when we, we started critiquing Steven Universe, like there were a lot of people who were so into the critiques, they would just keep watching a show to find something to be angry over. And that was when I was like, okay, like, listen, I'll watch the show to like hope that something good will turn out or like, you know, maybe a theory is proven or whatever. But if you're just like masochistically looking for something harmful just to like reinforce your own ideas like i feel like that's a point where you gotta be like okay this isn't healthy you gotta you gotta step back and be like th that that's not good chief you know lily orchard <sighs> oh boy have i never talked about lily orchard on this channel because oh boy has she been a figure I don't know. I have no interest in really talking about her. All I can say is that at one point I followed her account and I thought she said she actually had really good points about criticism, which is, you know, um, a lot of like good criticism on media, especially LGBT representation, is built on the fact that, you know, we shouldn't have to lower our standards. Like, like everything should be open to criticism, even things that are supposed are supposedly progressive and great, and we should be grateful. And Lily, Lily Orchard was like a... I almost kind of admired her confidence because she was the kind of person who would basically see, you know, like basically put her opinions out there and be like, yeah, like I'm unapologetically believing in this. Like it's the, it's the kind of confidence that like I almost like I wish I had. But um, once it was revealed that you know, a lot of the things that she was openly against, you know, like age of consent, uh, you know, consensual relationships. And then it was revealed that she commissioned and like role played this, the exact things in secret with someone. I was like, okay, that's, that's enough. That's enough Lily Orchard, I think. Yeah, that was... That was, I mean, the writing tips was obviously, uh, that was, that's just a whole big example of you're putting your opinions out there with no clarification. And of course you're going to get people trying to dunk on you for it. Of course they are. It's the internet. We've seen it time and time again. Ugh. But at the, at the point where like people were genuinely calling Lily out for like being a hypocrite and like not treating people well and indulging in the same kind of material she would criticize. I, I was like, okay, that's no, I, I can't respect that anymore. And specifically like, you know, gaslighting the people who tried to call her out and being like, uh, no. Like the confidence that I admired before just seemed like arrogance now. So that happens. It's the internet, it happens. 
unfortunately. The biggest conflict. Yeah, I guess we're just talking about internet problems, right? Is that just- is that the stream now? Is that what this has turned into? I have no problem with pe if people want to talk about it. It's just it's just surprising that it, it's come to this. Were people talking about DID? Oh boy. Oh yeah, Radiant Roses did give out uh, gift subs. Yeah, there's there's your little thank yous. Random music to break the mood. <laughs> sure. Seraphine. Interesting. I remember when Seraphine was first released and people were talking about how it's promoting weird parasocial relationships. That was- I'm sorry, I know you requested this song specifically so we could stop talking about it, but... Ugh, I'm just reminded of another thing that happened. Anyway, uh, let's let's not talk about Blizzard because Blizzard is a company that has a history of being shitty to its employees, especially its female and minority ones. Yay! Nothing is exempt from criticism. Everything you love has terrible things in it. Seriously though, hearing about like what actually goes on in blizzards, like like with the with how like awful the treatment of women has been, like genuinely it was like I I can't I can't support that like at all. Like at all. Like it just feels like it like really bad. Like it was bad before, like with the whole people saying that they were underpaid or undervalued but like straight up like an unsafe work environment was just like ugh made me feel gross made me feel nasty if you came to this stream to have a happy good time like i did <laughs> At least my headache's gone. I took a uh, I took some uh, Advil before I came here, so luckily the brunt of it is gone. Ugh. But hopefully I'll try to relax more as this stream continues. Glad you're starting to feel better. Oh, thank you. Seriously, like. You don't know how important it is to take breaks from the internet. Because, like, regardless of what you encounter, you're naturally going to encounter too much than, like, the human body is able to process. That's just a fundamental thing about the internet. It's... it's just too much. So... It's good to take a step back, binge watch a bunch of YouTube videos while you draw in the backgrounds. Because that's what I do. It's kind of the reason why, like, it's how I've been like weaning off of social media. It's just uh, putting YouTube videos on in the background and just doing my own thing on my laptop. You know? Writing for Chromosynth and all that. Oh, by the way, uh, I've been talking to Richie again about the soundtrack. And uh, yeah, things are going well. Things are going Gucci. Are you open to sketch requests? Yeah, sure. Okay, I'll be open. 
it's a very slow day art wise so if you want to submit a sketch i don't mind i don't expect to like this isn't a stream where i like have goals like concrete goals this is a stream where i'm like i need to cool down from the internet so i'm here just to relax and talk chill stream yeah i mean i wouldn't say chill i still like a lot of my discussions were like ranty but it's definitely like a cool down stream in a way Ugh. what sucks about the like what i talked about of that uh queer bait otd is that um like they blocked me so i obviously can't access uh their account anymore but i don't want to delete the messages just in case like, just in case I, like, need it, in case they say something about me. But at the same time, that means I'm gonna have to see, like, their last messages whenever I go into my messages to, like, talk to people about submissions and stuff. So that's, like, a... That's kind of a shitty double-edged sword there. 5,000 Corbos. The Corbs. At this, at these moments, I wish I had like, uh, like a internet, um, <laughs> who are those? I, I wish I had an internet agent where I was like, here, save the discussions I had with this person just in case they try to take anything out of context and start to accuse me directly. And, and they'll be like, yes, sir. And I'll just like move on with my day and not have to focus mental energy on it. Who's it you're talking about? I'm late for the tea. <laughs> uh, I won't go into it too much, but basically, uh, queer bait of the day, we had a little bit of a talk because I fundamentally disagree with the way they were running their accounts. I felt like they weren't being respectful enough. Uh, at the end, they blatantly just said they do not care about being respectful because it's their opinion and whatever. And I was like, well, and so they blocked me. That's the- that's the thick of the discussion, basically. Like, whatever. Ooh, this is a copyrighted song! Prob- I, I mean, maybe not, but... Yeah, that was just one request. I mean, also... It's not great. I would prefer discussions to end with a kind of mutual understanding. That's why I try to talk to people in general. But also, the people running that account are like 17, like both of them. So I'm like... I have a little bit of hope, like whatever like weird pettiness that is driving them to have this conflict, at the very least, they'll have room to grow out of it. Like, I would be concerned if they were like the, the same age as me and they're acting like this. But at the very least, I can say like, you know, they're, they're, they're teenagers. I hope they can... It sounds so petty when I say get better soon, but, like, legit, I, I want people who act in ways I disagree with to change over time. Like, I don't want to doom them. Especially if they're young. You're being too nice. <laughs> I can't have spite, <laughs> but to be fair, being nice is very, very exhausting. Like, you know that, that meme, aren't you tired of being nice? And I'm like, yes, I'm constantly tired of trying to word everything I say very carefully and trying to have understanding for every single side in existence. It's exhausting. But at the same time, I would feel a lot worse if I wasn't trying at all. A little spite as a treat. Here's the thing about spite. If you're in an argument on the internet, people will gladly use spite against you. That's why I don't do shit like, man, I don't, I don't do vague posts. I don't like, you know, make call outs or shit. I just kind of let the, let the issue just like die. Because if I had spite and was like, you know, address topics like you should shut the fuck up or something, then people will obviously use like the, t the tone argument as in like, 
I tried to be respectful, but you're bringing in disrespect into the conversation. Like, that's why I don't use spite, because, like, it can easily be weaponized against you, no matter what your argument is. It's like... Yeah, it's, 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 it's also just kind of a, a general thing of, you can't be the better person in a lot of ways, if you, like, on the internet. Like, you have to be, like, the teacher who, like, sits down and explains everything. Like, you can't, you lose your temper. You sent the refs? I don't care anymore, you get stepped on when you... Yeah, if someone calls me a bitch, I'll be like, fuck you. But I'm saying, like, if I'm- if I think someone is having a problem with something, I'm like, I want to talk to them personally and, ho and hopefully we can rectify things. Yeah, if someone straight up says, like, die, I'll be like, fucking kill me yourself, coward, and I'll get interactions and I'll forget the sadness I feel because I'm popular and I can make anything I want funny, but regardless, um... The important thing is that, um, I could dunk on people for the attention, but it's all- that's also kind of like negative reinforcement, don't you think? Like, oh man, I can't wait- like, you know those people on the internet who's like, I can't wait to get sent in on hate so I can- I, so I can clap back with my super epic remarks and totally own them in this discussion. And I'm like, oh god, like why- why do you look forward to getting spite messages like like why would anyone look forward to that it's just it's just a weird phenomenon it's also just really petty i don't like being petty guys as i've said before like literally i was worried that i hurt this person's feelings after they they blocked me i was like i my headache was inspired because like i was worried that i genuinely hurt this person's feelings when i was trying not to Like, you know, like, when you, like, when your Pokemon attack and they're confused and it damages itself in confusion? That was me! Okay, so this is Crash. This character is a kid, 17. Uh, okay. I assume the, the Mario thing is just a little outfit for them. And the little, little hoodie. The homeless hoodie. It's just them. The best argument is just making fun of them. I'm just like, I don't know. I'm the kind of person where, like, I don't find satisfaction in, like, clapping back. I want to extend the argument so long that they make an ass of themselves and I don't have to do shit, you know? I don't want to be the one, like, I can silence them if I want to, but ultimately, I want them to, like, come out of the little coward hole and say something so damning, I don't have to say anything. Like, they just clown themselves. That's what I want. The hoodie is his actual fit, the Mario's thing is so you can see his hair. Yeah, that makes sense. I like his hair. He's got like a it's a little it's a little choppy. It's a little choppy, but I like it. Have you guys noticed that um I feel like this is this I mean two lines isn't exactly a pattern, but have you ever noticed that sometimes families just like make noises together? Okay, I'm going to elaborate on this. Sometimes, uh, whenever I just say a word, or I say it weirdly, my mom repeats it. So it, and it's like really adorable. <laughs> Where it's like... I'll be like, uh, like, sang chu, and she'll be like, sang chu, and I'm like, oh my god, it's so... I don't know, for some reason, like, like, uh, we like to copy each other a lot, and say like, it's not, they're not words necessarily, but they're more like sounds. Like, is that a thing that like, is just a familial thing? Because I've noticed that uh, with for one of my friends, uh, I remember I went over to her house to meet her family for the first time. And 
like basically the entire family was just like making a joke or a noise and then everyone joining in and i was like other families do that i don't know i was just thinking about that because um it happened earlier with my mom and i found it mildly amusing No thought, the head empty. Okay. Sometimes a boy needs some thick eyebrows. What can I say? Yeah, their hair is actually like not shoulder length, but like kind of long. So I'll, I'll make sure to take that into account. Also, I have like the tiniest bit of experience drawing beanies, so you could call me an expert. You know what's funny though? Even though my the whole gist of my of the day account is color coded, you know, color contrast pairings, nobody has requested clans. And I'm eternally grateful for that. I have a personal vendetta against clans. Uh so even if I, I was I'm really tempted to make a post that's like I like even if you submit it, I will not post it. But I but I haven't like said that on my main because obviously if I say don't submit it people are going to submit it but since no one has submitted it yet I'm like grateful don't jinx it <laughs> it's mostly because like it's not just because the whole queer bait thing even though yeah that's that's a valid criticism and not it's not just Voltron fucking sucks it's that uh I have a personal vendetta against clans because it's such a good example of these are like the most cardboard personalities you can give to two male characters and then in the fandom you can interpret their relationship in like infinite different ways because they're so bland that people have made up thousands of different personalities for them and i'm like i can't enjoy this pairing even in a fandom because there's they're nothing they're, they're whatever people find convenient at the moment. They're nothing. At the very least, even when there's like usually, you know, like a popular pairing that's like fanon more than canon, I could be like, okay, like, you know, I can enjoy this. Um, but with Clance, like every single interpretation I found is like, it's the most like, I don't know what their personalities are. It's like, it's so generic. It's like, I've never... I never got into it, and I was like, you will find any media with two of the skinniest guys and just make up things for them to do. 
situations where they will hold hands and I'm like, ugh. It, it just, it just really like, I just didn't know why, what about Clance like deserved the attention. I guess that's why I was so like weirdly bitter about it. I guess I was mostly bitter because it was like queer baiting and it also wasn't really canon, but people like treated it like it was canon. So it was like, um, that's what I, that's what I really don't like is when people take, uh, characters from a show that is clearly like probably homophobic and making them seem like they're canon gay which is giving the the people running it like too much credit like i, I really don't like it when people do that because like uh, like first of all it's, it's misleading to people who don't know like people who are like don't know anything about voltron but know about clans would be like wow voltron must be a great show it must be super progressive and cool which is like not what it is at all and also i just like Especially since we know in the later seasons how poorly they treated actual gay characters. I'm like, what? Gays, don't reclaim this one. Don't do it. Yeah. Someone requested Italy, but they were fortunate and respectful and you told them no. Yeah, I think I saw that actually. Wasn't that like a public like reply? Yeah, I think I saw that. Yeah, you made a, you made a good choice there. Like, I'm not going to post Tatalia because that's... Like, nope, I'm not going back. Gay shipping is actually really bland because it's made up by girls for a generic show. Yeah, exactly. And Clance is like the most generic. At least with something like so Sokka and Suko, they're interesting characters, so I can see like the appeal of the dynamic between them. But it feels like Clance is like diet uh, Zuko and Sokka. You know? It's like distilled. It's like LaCroix. Oh, someone DM'd me. Oh, I def I feel like I saw someone request Italy like in your comments, but okay. Yeah, that that might be me. My bad. I don't think I've had the cojones to outright deny a request, but I was getting really close. Um <laughs> So this is the one of the most cowardly things I've done. So someone requested a uh, Friday Night Funkin' ship, which is not completely off the table because I did post BF and GF, but I was like, I kind of like wanted to limit it to one post because I'm like, I'm not gonna give the series like too much attention. It doesn't deserve it. But then the person, <sighs> the person who submitted the pairing was someone who was like promoting their mod so they were like, can I submit my, like, my soft boy versions of BF and Pico as the characters? And I'm like, like, I guess I can't blame you for shooting your shot, but like, for some reason, when people submit their own characters into something, I feel like that's like, there's something kind of like, weirdly show off -y about it. Like, I don't know. It kind of feels like it's in poor taste, I guess. Is, is it just me? It might be just me because I have a weird, I have weird like boundaries about like, you know, as a creator and stuff. But I was like, I, I don't, uh, so unless the account says OCs are allowed, you really shouldn't. Yeah. I know some, some accounts do, which is like, you know, good for them. But fundamentally I was like, uh, and I tried to come up with a compromise, so I was like, how about I post BF slash Pico and like I'll include one of your mods images as like one of the example pictures and I'll credit you. Yeah, and I was like, okay, that's a, that's a that's a nice, you know, middle ground. Like I'll feature your mod, but it's not like just your mod. It's the original two characters as well, like because that's that's what my account is for. It's for characters from the original source media. And so then I asked the regular questions, you know, like, um, any details about the relationship? Do you want to be credited? And I think they misunderstood what I was trying to do. So then they proceeded to tell me the details of their O, like their fanon relationship in their mod that BF and Pico had been dating for like three months or whatever. I'm like, I feel like there's a fundamental 
miscommunication between what I am trying to say and what you are trying to say. And, um, I was like, oh boy, this isn't... No one's gonna be happy. And I... I deleted their message. <laughs> I didn't block them, but I'm like... I, that that was probably like the closest I got to cowarding out or denying a submission was just I'm just hoping that this person doesn't check back and hold me accountable because I'm like uh, I don't feel right about posting this under the circumstances I don't feel like correcting them I just like this is just weird you know sometimes it just be weird I might be exaggerating, but... Oh! Added permitted term. I really don't like gay? Wow, Twitch. Okay. Interesting thing out of context. I might be exaggerating, but as a gay guy, I don't like gay ships because it's mainly... Oh. I mean, that's a, that's a fine point to have. Like, definitely you can talk about how, like, yaoi in general is, like, kind of a fetish genre dominated by women for, like, you know the aestheticization of gay men. But I feel like, you know, Ray T. Lux, your opinion is valid and I understand it completely, but have a little bit of hope in your heart. You know, there are some good, there's some good gay ships out there and there are some, you know, the, there are some good gays out there. So keep your heart open. Like, I know there's a lot of, uh, uh, sapphics out there that feel like they can't connect with a lot of sapphic ships because they're very, like, fetishized, usually. But, you know, you gotta stay strong. Stay strong. Because there's always gonna be an exception. There's always gonna be people who wanna do right. Oh my god, left <laughs> two sketches. I made him very like blocky. I hope you enjoyed. You love the look of this character? Yeah, I just made him like a guy. I made him a I made him a little chonky. I hope that's fine. If not, I can you know, I can always change it. But... I think I made him a little too hunched over though, so I will rectify that a little bit. There we go. No, he's perfect. Aww. I'm assuming the color you want me to go is with this color. So that's like a like a that's like a this kind of purple. You're so tempted to contribute? Dear lord, I will get nothing chromosynth done if you do that. Ooh, that's a pretty purple. That's a pretty purple, that is. That's a pretty purple. Look how nice that is. That's like a... That's a very... Like, that is very deep lavender. A very deep lap, or maybe like a steel pink. That's nice. Listen, I've done so much color researching when it comes to making my characters that I just know a bunch of colors off the top of my head. I I'm fruity like that. <laughs> you crested a song? Oh, did you? Oh, sorry. Uh, let me play it right now so I don't forget. Epic orchestral cover. Wow. By the way, um, Atlas, thanks for. I, I know this is a weird thing to say thanks for, but thanks for commenting your appreciation on that, on the latest OTD post I posted, which was the Omori one. I was actually tempted to, like, not post it because I was worried that Sunny and Aubrey wasn't a very popular ship. 
So I thought of maybe posting it as a bonus pairing for like another day. But I was surprised at how much people like it. I thought people generally like Sunny and Basil more. But yeah, seeing the love was nice. I also just like it when people submit pairings and other people express love for the same pairing. It's like, there you go. Like, imagine submitting a pairing you thought nobody else liked, and then other people are just like losing their minds over it. Wouldn't that feel so good? You feel like, oh my god, these people understand me, and these. I could make more friends in a fandom. So, like, yeah, that's that's one of the, the nice potential outcomes of my account. So, I want, I want people with similar interests to perhaps find solace and find each other. Coming up with a ship is a really good idea. No hate for sunflower ships, you just don't like basil. I mean... I actually, uh... I haven't talked about my Omori shipping opinions. Uh, I actually really like Kel and Aubrey. It's a pairing that I, like, tried to hate at first because I was like, Oh, here we go, it's the girl and the guy who don't get along. And, like, you know, I hope they're not straight ship together but at the end I was like they actually have some really cute moments together and I was like oh damn it I like Kel and Aubrey together too much and like the fact that they're like paired together a lot feels like it's like intentional and also Sunny and Basil is cute too but also like Basil feels less like a character and more like and like a like a a, a human representation of innocence lost, if that makes sense. Like, Basil definitely feels like the epitome of corrupt innocence rather than a character. Like, the fact that he's, like, the only blonde one and that he's, like, this kind of a manic pixie dream guy, especially. Like, I was, like, mm. I didn't quite... Didn't quite feel like attached to him. Like Obviously, like he was like, still a kid, but he felt less real than the other characters, notably. It might have been because he was blonde, yeah. It might have been because he was more white. <laughs> Maybe. But regardless, yeah. I, I definitely can see where you're coming from, Atlas, with your thoughts on Basil. Uh, this is Crash. So I'm gonna save it as Crash. And I'm gonna post- oh wait. Hold on. I forgot the little effects. I mustn't forget the effects. There we go. Yeah! Just, he's just a little guy. If your character has like a big fat hoodie and like homeless clothes, like that's a- that's a- that's a guy, alright? That's a fucking guy. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about most of the time. I just assume I do and hope that people will go along with it. So this is Crash for my friend Koyabi. Do you see how much I like thick lines? Oh man. I admire art with thin lines so much, but like, I can't do it. I'm not meant for thin lines. I, I don't know what that says about me as an artist, but... Thank you so much saying no problem! Hi, Renny! Hi! Crashing the boys, yeah. You can say what you want about Ed's World, but like, the concept of everyone's designs basically just being color-coded hoodies, that was kind of genius. You have to admit that was kind of genius. From a character design standpoint. Anyway, uh, this is Priscilla for Lavender Emily. Okay, ooh, this is a cute design. Alright, is the song over? Yeah, that song is over. Back to... King Koopa. Dear pesky plumbers, <laughs> the Koopalings and I- Oh god, I forgot the entire 
spiel, but... I find the Super Mario Super Show voices particularly amusing. Cause they're, like, clearly just guys. Hey, Mario! What do you think we ought to do? <laughs> like, that kind of stuff. Like, so there's something special about, uh... Chris Martinet, because he sounds like he was fucking like genetically modified in a spaghetti bowl to be Mario and Luigi. And there's something very special about it. But when it comes to like um Super Mario Super Show guys, it's like they're just guys. They're just some guys. Like you just pick them off of the street. Not even like a street of New York or something. They're just guys. I think the most, like, cutting remark you can have for someone's favorite character is saying, they're just some guy. I, like, that's, that's something I've learned to weaponize over time. Because, like, there's, it's, there's something very, like, telling about saying, oh, that's your, that's your little meow meow, that's, that's your husband, that's the, the, that's the one you simp over. Oh, I took a really big look at him, yeah? He's nothing special, he's just a guy. He's just some guy. Like, there's something very, like, cutting about that particular phrasing that feels so funny to me that I really like. Please sit and never say meow meow again. I'm on fucking OTD Twitter. Everyone's saying this is my little meow meow or whatever. Like, fuck it. Oh, God. I'm so sick of it. I'm so sick of people saying it. I'm sorry. When in Rome. Ugh. I'm so sick, uh, uh, oh my god, anyway, I, I, sh I shouldn't keep, I shouldn't keep talking about that, I, I have to, I have to make sure to not say every little dumb thought that comes to my head, especially when they're really harmless things, harmless complaints about people, I mean, like, but it'll, it'll make me sound really petty, and again, I've established that I don't like doing that. But I'm gonna go back to the OTD thing one more time, but because there's an account called uh, OTD Struggles. You know, like kind of how most fandom communities have like a struggle tweets account, where they'll basically call out someone for being a particular fan of something and just like suffering in a spe in a specific way. That's like very like oh boy, you have it rough, buddy. And, but it's like a very like amusing, you know, like. It's usually whenever they make a mistake of some kind. It's not meant to shame them, it's more like, haha, that, that's a funny blunder that happens. And, um... I haven't been posted on that account yet for OTDs. Yeah, we do a little bit of trolling, a little bit of teasing. But I don't think I'll ever be on there, because I'm the kind of person to double, fucking, triple check everything I post online. Like, there are a lot of, like, what people are, you know struggled for are like typos and shit like some of the most like funniest posts i've seen was like today's gambler of the day is king dice from Cumhead," <laughs> and then they were like guys i was half asleep when i posted this stop making fun of me and i'm like i will never make a post as funny as that because i just don't spell things wrong i'm too i'm too like perfectionist about my spelling i'll never make a post as funny as that it was really funny, and it deservedly got a lot of notes. I was like, God, I wish. If I ever make like an egregious typo or, you know, like a faux pas, it has to be like intentional though. And I feel like at that point, it's just not, it's not natural. Interesting hair. I 
I will respect the squareness, but I will try to accommodate. I made her in a pick crew, and I thought the hairstyle I made with her was cute. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a cute pick crew. It's just like, because I don't see any lines inside the hair, like, I can't really distinguish where the fold should go, if that makes sense. So I just kind of have to wing it. Tell me if uh, you want to see a particular change, though. When it comes to the shape, I'm very much, uh, it's being Wong. Being a My Hero Academia fan is an interesting place to be. I intentionally didn't bring that up because I was already exhausted from talking about things. But yeah, that the Mineta thing is, is a fucking thing. That's my art, by the way. Okay. I mean... You don't have to send out the refs. Just like... Just like let, let me know if I'm, if I'm off in any way. Hey Sang. Hi GMAC13. Hello. I have bad memory when it comes to familiars, so uh not not in a magic way, I mean in a in a people I know on the internet way. So whenever people call me by my first name, I'm always like a little shocked and I'm like, do I know you? But I just realized that that's the name I kinda put out there. So of course people are gonna call me by that. She looks amazing. I am blessed. Aww. Well, you know what I always say. I couldn't have done it without such a great design. Lavender Emily. We are Sang's little meow meows. Stop it. That's that's coming dangerously close to having a Sangled fandom name. And I want to stray away from that as far as possible, if we can. You were in the tearless stream yesterday, but had to go to sleep. No idea saying what's your name. <laughs> I mean, that makes sense. Yeah, very intuitive. But yeah, I don't know if you could tell from the other stream, but I do in fact draw sometimes. <laughs> Ranking random characters by baseless and very subjective standards is not in fact something I do all the time. It is actually the, the exception to the rule. I'm gonna put this poop a little more back. Just to give her the hair a little more volume. This person looks like like they could be in Greece. Like like the way I'm drawing them especially. I think it's because of the mullet. Yeah, does this count as a mullet? <laughs> Probably does a little bit, right?
I've been following you on Twitter a bit. The algorithm likes to show me your likes. Yeah, apparently Twitter really loves showing people my likes, which is kind of a shame because I like almost every post I see. <laughs> so yeah, if you see a like, if you see my likes that vary from, hey, check out what's happening in this country right now. It's a really awful emergency. To hey, look at this cute Pokemon I drew. To Man, wouldn't it be funny if I got my ass plowed by Captain America? Like, it's that's just the dichotomy of the tweets I like. That that do be Twitter? Yeah, it do be. To be fair, I don't post as much art as I used to, so I guess Twitter's trying to make up for it. Why would you like that third one? I don't know, because I know the artist and I want to support their art, maybe? That would probably be the only reason why I support that third one. Otherwise, you'll actually see me interacting with Nase for work art very few times, actually. Because I'm aware that a lot of miners follow me and I try not to be like, Ooh, people can look at my likes and see the porn. Like, I, I put in extra effort to be careful about that. Okay, my playlist is officially looping. Let's, uh, beep, 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 beep. Go here. I remember I made a pixel art redraw of the respect artwork. <laughs> Ring on a day for a tweet that hits all three buttons. Um. <laughs> hey guys, here's a thread on what's happening in Syria next to uh, a cute Pikachu with an OC being railed by Steve, Captain America. Yeah, that that would be one hell of a post, all right. It's it's covering a lot of bases in more ways than one. This isn't much, body-wise, but... Eh. I can raise them a little bit to show a little more with their body. I thought you were gonna say Steve Minecraft? Oh, God. Jesus Christ. Can you believe there are people out there who think the Minecraft people are sexy? Like, it's one thing to find, like, an Enderman sexy. Which, like, I, I guess I can have room for a doubt there. But to say, like, oh my god, Hero Brian, fucking. <laughs> you can, you can, you can dig down if you know what I mean. <laughs> but, like, I don't understand the Hero Brian sexy man thing. I really don't. Minecraft is a style that uh, is anti sex. I think if I see a block in real life, my. One of my last instincts would be to fuck it, personally. That's just me, you know. But I'm not the target audience for the Minecrafts, so I guess it's not my place to know. Is Herobrine even real? You know, I genuinely don't know. I think it's supposed to be like, just like, uh, I think he basically started out as a creepypasta. And that that's kind of all he ended up being. It's not like a purple guy Five Nights at Freddy situation where you've clearly set up like an antagonistic role for this character. I think Herobrine came out of nowhere. It was just a fandom thing. I think it's because, um, you know, that rule about fandoms where if you can't find a character to bone, just make one up. <laughs> you know that age-old fandom rule? Anti-sex, which I was wish I was made in the Minecraft style then. We're just saying words today, huh? We're just saying words and throwing them at the wall and seeing which ones stick, huh?
This is a very sexy shade of pink, by the way. I adore this pink. Your brain is operating at like 10%, that's what happens. <laughs> I mean, I understand. I'm, I'm getting slowly a little bit tired, and i that's definitely a sentence I would make if I had come up with it. You made Priscilla look so sex. Aww, no problem. Her, her name is... I, uh, I can't assume pronouns. Their name is Priscilla, which is a very cute, pretty name. I gotta say. Haven't seen a lot of Priscilla's in media in general. She, her? Okay. Thanks for giving her big ass eyebrows, by the way. It's always a pleasure to draw. Big eyebrow, very good. They are very good. They're also just good for expressions in general. All right, so that's Priscilla. Yeah, I like the vibes. I'm posting her on Discord right now. Pr Priscilla for what's your username again? Lavender Emily. Whoop. Bonds. Take break? We can take a little break. But at the same time, I'm reaching a point of exhaustion because not only because of the headache I mentioned earlier, but also because I talked about said headache for a long time. I'm reaching a point of like, uh. <laughs> So if I take a break and come back, I might still just be tired. Because that's just where I am right now. So. Hydrate. I will hydrate. Thank you. I am officially out of sippy. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, okay. I think I'm just gonna mess around with Bree Sprite a little bit and then we can call it a night. Cause I have to wake up early tomorrow because I have a therapy appointment. Woo! A lot of what I'm trying to do nowadays is to not be a bitch coward. So I'm doing more adult things like making phone calls, which is a really scary thing. But after you do it twice to the same place, it becomes surprisingly less scary. You know? It's amazing how things work like that. So I was able to call like the hospital and book my own appointment. And I'm like, yes. Yes. I now have weekly appointments, baby. Yeah. It's the small victories. <laughs> like, you know, whenever I saw those things online where it's like, like, I'm... I'm a failure as an adult. I, I get scared during phone calls. And whenever I see him, I'm like, that, that's nothing. And But whenever I actually have to make a phone call, I'm like, do I have to though? <laughs> yeah. So this is very, this is very crucial in me getting over uh, a lot of things actually, in general.
I haven't uploaded the VODs in a long time. I have them downloaded, I just have to upload them to YouTube. So, I'll, I'll try to get, put that on my to-do list for the future. And edit that uh, Sexy Man Lists episode. Bald Bree. Stop. Stop. You know I'm sensitive about that, guys. I'm sensitive when you call my characters bald. Because I know I can't draw bald people. <laughs> Which is why I cover them in all this hair. That's the thing I'm sensitive about. Not the wig comments. Come on, guys. Not the wig comments. <laughs> Jeez. I'm just trying to adjust it in ways so, uh, like, her proportions are, are alright. Please upward please upload DreamWorks Kingdom Hearts rant? No. No, absolutely not. I refuse. Because I that was made like I, I remember when I made that video, specifically when that happened on stream, only because I was going to stop streaming, but then I was on a very sleepy, like mania induced rant. Which caused that video and I don't want it to go anywhere. In fact, I think I deleted it for the exact purpose. Yeah, that's right. You can't access the Kingdom Hearts rant anymore. Except if it's on a stream that I've uploaded, which is possible. So there. I mean, the Kingdom Hearts rant happened at the end of a stream. So there is a slight possibility you'll find it. Like, the, the whole clip highlight was like from a stream. So you could, you could find it hypothetically, but whether it's actually saved or not, that's a little ambiguous even for me. You feel like you missed something important? Actually, uh, you're mistaken. You missed literally nothing. To sum it up, it was basically a very sleep deprived ramble where I was like, what if, what if Kingdom Hearts did not with Disney, but with DreamWorks. That'd be so cool that we could go to Shrek World. Oh my god. That was basically the the entire thing. And I, I was just like I was out of I was gasping for breath because I was just I wanted to get this out there to the world and I just did not pace myself at all. So, not only are you seeing me just saying the most random bullshit, you're also seeing me at like my lowest physical state. Why do you think I <laughs> Yeah. I d also definitely said something about Donald and Goofy being turned into different things when they're in different worlds, but yeah. I don't remember, and that's for the best. You definitely need to see this now? Actually, you don't. Uh, no. No, I think you're good, actually. How to train your dragon world will be sick, actually, right? <laughs> you're tricking me, I see you. You're tricking me into rambling about it again. Like it's a, like it's a redux, but I won't fall for it. I won't fall for it. Ah, uh, Brie is so gender. She's so gender. Okay. Every time I look at Brie's design, I gotta be like, this is like such a sang gender wish fulfillment person. 
Everything about Brie just screams, I wanted to be you when I was little. Or like every character I saw that resembled you as a kid, like I adored for some mysterious reason. I was like, huh, I really like female characters that uh, look a little less feminine and they like, you know, they don't really care about being super feminine. They're just kind of themselves, but they, they're not mean. Like they're not like, uh, they're not like Buttercup, Butter, Powerpuff Girls where they're like kind of mean. I didn't like the mean girls. I wanted them to be just like tough and cool. And I was like, man, I hope this doesn't affect the way like I perceive myself as I grow up. No, it's just, it's just like that. Yellow and blue is my weakness. You'll be surprised at how much yellow and blue combos I can <laughs> I can scrounge up for these characters. Her hat still looks weird to me. Like it like for some reason the form of it feels inherently off. I, I think it's because it's like routed up. Like it needs to be a, like a better shape. But regardless, whatever. I'll live. Yellow as an accent color? Oh man. Yellow as an accent color, blue as a base color. That's basically the same old formula right there. That's my that's my formula. Like, you can see it on Ujins, you can see it on Adams, you can kind of see- ugh, like, man, it's on Yuna's. Uh, it's on Phoebe's. Ugh. I'm so predictable. It's because yellow is naturally, uh, the brightest hue, and blue is naturally the darkest. That's my scientific, uh, excuse. <laughs> oh, reliable, yeah, you're right. Fun fact, I looked it up. Undertale has a total of 93 unique endings. Like obviously there's a pacifist, genocide, and neutral. But like specifically there's so many variations of neutral that it adds up to about 93. And I was like, okay, that's that's pretty interesting. I'll do my best to make sure Chromosynth has less than that. Because I'm incorporating a lot of variability in Chromosynth, and it's reached the point where I'm like, did Toby Fox do that much? If no, maybe dial it back a little bit. And then there's blue and red polar opposite. BFGF partners, yeah. There's a lot kill X character, but not Y endings, yeah. I mean, obviously the the variations are gonna be a little different in mine, but yeah, it's just I'm like, I want to like make you know like how people complain in Danganronpa that the story is so uh straightforward it's like i want to see how this person's executed or like i want to see if this person you know killed or like whatever and like that those kind of alternate scenarios like i thrive off of that in chromosynth and so i kind of want to make one for everyone which is a lot of work which is true hi dingaropa that's it's not surprising uh but also consider it would i think it's fun <laughs> Game development is always a weird balance between That's gonna be really impractical to work in and also but I want do Give me do please That's basically the right brain versus the left brain in action Nagito heard you? Yeah
He's seeing if the hope that I can make a good video game will beat the hope of the video game sucking ass. I'm actually rewatching Dan Rupa 2 because uh, every now and then I just do full rewatches of my like my favorite games because <laughs> I love just putting YouTube videos on the background even if I've heard them a million times before and it's always fascinating to just see games that whose gameplay styles I admire and character writing and just like observe every time it's almost like research which is my excuse for watching it. 10,000 times. Also, I know a lot of you follow me, but am I posting, am I reblogging too much of the OTD stuff? I'm very, like, concerned that, like, I'm, you know, I'm self reblogging a little too much. So I, de I try to space them out if possible and also like retweet a bunch of other stuff too so it's not just me uh fluffing my own feathers but like uh i get i get nervous about the littlest things i think it's good balance you don't think it's too often Oh, well, that's good. I hope that's the case. I think Nakito heard you in any context is a very terrifying thing to hear. I think retweeting your own stuff is fine. Yeah, but it's also just like, if I'm making two accounts and one account is retweeting a lot of the other account, it's like, People who only follow for one account, like, you know, I don't want to force them to see something from my other account. Oh, ow, oh. This morning I actually woke up with a very specific pain on the side of my head. It's kind of coming back now. Oh, ow. Ooh, jeez, ow. Ooh. It's like a very particular sting in one spot. I don't know what that is. I don't get headaches that often. I get dull, throbbing pain, but not, never like a sharp pain. So that's a little concerning. You fall like a thousand accounts. That could also be it. But it's very easy for me to get, feel guilty whenever, you know, I say, hey people, I'm online. And I'm like, here's some things that aren't art. And people, you know, oh man. Creeper, oh man. I just wish I could always be happy and content with everything I do and not worry about myself or what other people think of me. Wouldn't that be the life? Ouch, that sucks. Yeah, that's a dream. Yeah, that's a, that's a cold reality, but it's there. A lot of my, like, uh, not to, like, psychoanalyze myself, I literally have a therapist appointment tomorrow, so the need to talk about my own issues is literally being absolved, but I feel like, you know, I have a lot of self-awareness when it comes to my problems. That doesn't mean I have the ability to fix them, I'm just, I'm just a big, big thinker, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's, that, that's what's wrong with me, and, like, you know, that doesn't rectify anything, but at the very least, I know what's wrong with me. Uh, sometimes I wish I didn't care so much. I mean, it's not just, like, caring about issues and things. I just feel like I just care too much about other people and my own, you know... Just, yeah, just, uh, just other people, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, I don't think I have hyper empathy because that's like a real 
actual disorder, and I don't think it's responsible of me to just claim I have it, even though I don't have, like, a medical professional. But I definitely have something like that, where I'm just, like, very, very cognizant of being, like, you know, being convenient for other people and thinking about their feelings. It feels worse to be self-aware but unable to change. <sighs> oh boy. That, I kind of I kind of feel that actually because um, that's the it, it can be painful to be like okay so I have a problem with not feeling good about myself feeling self-aware in that condition but not being able to change it almost feels like you know like you're not putting enough effort in it like I know it's a problem and I know it's a bad one so why aren't I doing more to change it like that's a that's a very like easy um, negative cycle to fall into. The idea that you're so self-aware, like you should be, the problem should be solved by now, and that um, your self-awareness is actually kind of more of a burden than anything. That's how I feel anyway. I feel you on that. Caring too much about others' opinions is something you struggle with. Yeah. Like, I'll talk to my brother and be like, Oh man, there's this person that I really want to get along with my roommate, but I think she hates me. What can I do to make her not hate me? And, um, my brother's like, Who gives a fuck about your roommate? Like, just, just like, leave that bitch. <laughs> like, he doesn't use those words, but he's very, like, do what you want, fuck the people who say otherwise. And I'm like, no, the solution isn't fuck her. I'm like, not literally, but... Like, um, I want to decipher whether she actually hates me or I'm just being paranoid. And he's like, who cares? If, if you if you feel uncomfortable around her, just, like, stop being around her. I'm like, I'm not the kind of person who just, like, once, like, I once people turn out to be problems, I'll just ditch them. I'm, I, I don't know. I'm just not that kind of person. I couldn't stand to be the first one of being the second one sucks. <laughs> Would you want to be an asshole but unaware, but a good person but too aware? God, being the second one on the internet is genuinely like a curse. Because once you're on the internet, you ha you realize there's only so much you can do. You know, is ignorance bliss, or like are you just just painfully aware of all the problems in the world? I feel like being, like, alive is trying to find, like, a happy medium between those. To be fair, the second one is my reality. I would actually be terrified to be the first one. Like, I would hate the notion that I'm somehow, like, a terrible asshole person. And everyone around me, like that that's some like paranoia anxiety shit. Luckily, um, my anxiety isn't that bad to the point where I think legitimately everyone hates me. I know some people have like anxiety to that point where it's like very it's very debilitating. My anxiety is more like I value people too much to the point that I am afraid of them hating me, potentially. Not the idea that they already hate me. So it's a little less extreme, but still very it's there. It's a problem. Which chromosynth character will have a red tail? Ujin. Anyway. Um. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a tough discussion. Definitely. But there's gotta be some boundaries. Yeah, exactly. That's why it's good to... People always say don't spend too much time on social media. It's not just a numbers thing. It's just a... At some point, you have to stop feeding yourself information. You know. You have to give yourself a break. Because obviously social media is unhealthy when it comes to obsessively checking it for the little validation. But it's also, with these, with this like unlimited access to everything, you're going to be exposed to a lot of shitty things that like kind of ruin your day. And sometimes it's better if you just take a break for yourself. Ugh. I want to swim again. Partly because Seiyu's song is playing, but... 
There's something about swimming in a pool that's very... That's very cleansing. I haven't swum in a long time. I should go. I catch myself doom scrolling. Yeah, that's that's especially like don't do that. Like if you find yourself in like an internet pit where you're just mindlessly scrolling and like not feeling great about it, like there are sometimes when I catch myself like scrolling on YouTube at like the the stupidest shorts where people just do shitty things and I'm not learning anything, I'm not entertained, I'm just sitting there. And I'm like, I feel gross. I feel like I'm filling my head with wads of wet old newspaper. That's what it feels like. And so I have to like, wretch myself out of it because like, Jesus Christ. Don't do that to yourself for too long. Anyway, I think that's enough with Bree for now. Yeah, we'll make this a bit of a short stream. I'd rather stream consistently and stream maybe shorter rather than stream rarely and stream longer, if that makes sense. I think consistency is good above everything else. Yeah. Also, my throat is dry, and I have run out of sippy, so that's a key to the fact that I have to go. She looks so cute. Yeah, hi! Hello! I know I- I know like, you know, gender is a thing, but she's just a little guy. Like, one of my favorite terms of endearment is like, they're just a little guy. Yeah, they're, they're my little boy. Yeah. Yeah. There's something very- that's why I like gender terms a lot, because I'm just like, yeah, this is my little guy. That's my little, that's love my little baby boy. All right, let us go on to Vich. She's just a little dude, yeah, yeah. Chrome. There we go. Oh, they're, they're streaming the Olympics. Oh, she's so pretty. She actually looks like someone I know. Oh my god, she's so pretty. You know, it's very cruel of the world to just give me a lot of pretty people on my internet feed and then put me in the smack dab of ass Kansas. Where, um, not to be confused with Arkansas, that's a completely different place. Where I'm just like, oh. Everyone here is like a Korean Christian or like just an old white person. And I, I wish things were different. Night Singled, you have to get to bed, catch another stream? Thank you for coming. Uh, Calvin's streaming. And I think rating him would be nice especially since he's drawing a very gender character right now so let's uh, let's give him some love thank you for the stream and the sketch hey no problem no problem sometimes it feels like uh even if i get nothing done chromosynth wise getting those little sketch requests done makes me feel productive it feels like hey like i, I got to i gotta make some people stay in a very like in a very specific way, you know? It feels nice. It feels good. Calvin Sims. Oh, wasn't he Calvin Sims art before? Now he's just Calvin Sims. Interesting. Anyway, let's raid. Uh, his raid message should be gender. Yes. Actually, yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, Safi, I didn't see your message before I said that. Uh, yeah. We're gonna raid Calvin. Our raid message will be gender. You can add an exclamation point if you want if you're very enthusiastic about gender. <laughs> I have a love-hate relationship with gender. You got in late? <laughs> Sorry, Bread Mafia. Uh, thanks for following, though. Lots of love. Uh, good night, everybody. See you on Tuesday. Gender. I don't know. It's on YouTube somewhere. It's been a while.